Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit and enter the code i5 at checkout. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 69. It's perfectly balanced. This is the Fine Fine Show, where we scour the app store, and we find tips and news and tricks and goodies, and we throw them at you, and we hope you're wearing a face mask, because we have a really good arm. Number one. Every few months, I feel like a journaling app comes along, and it's supposed to help you organize all the cool things that you've already done by combining your camera roll with let's say, GPS history and, and showing you where you've been. Heyday is the latest of apps like this, but it's pretty good, so I want to talk about it now. You give it access to your photos and you turn on location services. Then Heyday builds your history for you by grouping photos that were taken within a certain time frame in close proximity to each other, and it works pretty well. I used Facebook to sign in, although you can not use Facebook and just go through an email. I was up and running in under a minute. It was very fast. And in general, I thought it was very accurate. For example, I went to a birthday party on Saturday night, and all of the photos show up in a nice little grid, and I've got some control over what they look like. I also have control over the final product, too. So if I want to manually group photos, maybe for some reason there's a photo that didn't make it in there, or I would like to add to the group, I can do that manually. I can add it to my timeline. And if I want to add a little note to any entry, maybe remind myself where I was or that I liked that dish or just give my moment more context, I can do that too. Heyday has a social network quality, so my friends and I are supposed to be able to share our moments with each other. Although I found that for personal journal apps like this, sometimes the social functionality feels a little unnecessary unless you really want to have access to photos on somebody else's phone, which you might. I think Heyday works uh, really well right out of the gate, has a smart grouping by era or place, and even reminded me of a few experiences I'd forgotten about way back when. Job well done, and it's free. Number two, since it's gift giving season, I thought we'd cover another little add-on for your favorite iPhone fanatic who needs a little something special in their stocking this year, besides a lump of coal. The Allo Clip Macro 3-in-1 Lens might just be the perfect gift. It's a physical add-on that has a macro, wide-angle, and fisheye lenses to enable 7x, 14x, or 21x magnification. So say you're taking a really uh, extreme close photo of an insect, a honeybee, or a plant, or a flower, or something where you want to get up really close to see the detail. The iPhone camera is great. We all agree about that. But on its own, it's not exactly the most powerful macro lens. For $70, the Holoclip macro lens really expands the kind of portraits that you can do without having to pack an additional camera on your next adventure or even your next walk in the park. And it's easy to remove as well. It's compatible with iPhones 5 and 5S and the 5th gen iPod Touch. You can find out more either at holoclip.com or a bunch of retailers like the Apple Store itself. Happy snapping. Number three, we got an email from Roy in Chicago, Chicago, who noticed something interesting in his settings. He writes, are you guys aware of this? Go to settings, privacy, location services, system services, frequent locations, and there's a whole history of the places that you've been to the most. Apple's collecting some valuable data here, don't you agree? Uh, yes, Roy, I do. I've actually never seen this list before. It's really, it's kind of buried in there, isn't it? And it's on by default, which I know is going to upset a few of you, which I thought was a good idea to bring it to your attention. Now, Apple says it not only makes its map tools better, but it can also learn places you visit frequently to provide what it calls useful location-related information. Now, you can turn this feature off if you don't care about stuff like that, or you feel you'd rather swap useful information for more privacy. It's good to know it's there, though, particularly if you know anybody 
who might be insane or just really interested in your recent whereabouts and might know that this little breadcrumb trail exists on your iPhone. It's pretty thorough. Good thing I have nothing to hide. Let's take a moment to thank iFixit for sponsoring this episode of i5. It's an amazing resource. You probably know iFixit for its teardowns of devices. I love them. But it's also an online community with over 10,000 repair guides from everything, not just for an iPhone, but a computer, a tablet, a game console, even your bike and other home appliances. It's basically like having a free online repair manual for pretty much everything. Maybe you shattered your iPhone screen or you wanna save your iPod Classic because you just can't get rid of it or you need to swap out the battery on your MacBook Air. iFixit also makes the most trusted repair tools for consumer electronics, including the Pro Tech Toolkit. 70 tools to assist you with any mod or, or misfortune that might come your way that you wanna fix. It's the gold standard for how electronics work from garage hackers, the CIA, the FBI, Everybody uses these tools. More importantly, iFixit's tools are used in service departments everywhere. You've got the 54-bit driver kit. It has standard, specialty, and security bits, Phillips bits, Pentalo bits, Torx and Torx security bits, tri-wing bits, triangle bits, swivel top precision driver. You get the idea. There's pretty much everything in here. An anti-static wrist strap keeps all your devices safe from accidental static discharge. You don't want to be dealing with that. And it's lightweight, it's compact, it's a durable tool roll, makes it the on-the-go choice for professionals and even amateurs. It's $64.95 and backed by a one-year warranty. If you're a hobbyist, if you like the whole DIY thing, you will love the ProTech Toolkit for things like fixing your eyeglasses or your sink or your cabinet doors. Best of all, there are thousands of free iFixit guides to help you put your tools to use. Hey, maybe you've never used some of these. You can learn how to use them. Holidays are right around the corner. The ProTech Toolkit is a perfect gift for any geek, hobbyist, or do-it-yourselfer. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. We'll give the gift to somebody who would like to do it themselves. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for a free step-by-step -step guides. iFixit also sells every part, every tool that you'll need. And if you enter the code i5 at checkout, you'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. Again, that's ifixit.com slash twit. And we thank iFixit for their support of i5 for the iPhone. Number four. Oh, I am excited about this. Would you like a new pet? Not a real pet, I know that's a lot of commitment, but just a pet in your iPhone. A pet called a Fugu, are you interested? Against my better judgment, I installed an app called Hatch. It was $2, $1.99 in the App Store. And now I have a little Fugu to take care of. And he's a little animal that needs me to feed him and play with him and make sure he gets enough love. Or I'm supposed to feel really bad about myself. It's basically a Tamagotchi inside your iPhone. Hi, little friend. And it's one of those things that's very addictive, and then it's gonna cause me to not get a lot of work done. And it's really cute. Now, I just started taking care of my Fugu. He hatched earlier this morning. I've been feeding him apples. Uh, he gets really cranky if I don't feed him enough. And if I feed him a lot, then he sometimes goes to the bathroom. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. You might wonder why I would go through the trouble of taking care of something when it's clear I can barely take care of myself. The thing is that the graphics in Hatch are really adorable, and I'm really curious to see how this game of life evolves. And it's really not that hard to be a parent. So, you know, I'm a plant killer, but I apparently can take care of a fugu. Growing fugu only needs to be fed fruit at least once a day. If you give it love and attention, it'll give you oh, little hi. gifts and do a little happy dance every once in a while. And you can tuck in your fugu for a quiet oh, night by plugging in your iPhone with Hatch open when you go to bed, so it's like you guys are like living together. So I'm gonna go ahead and give parenting a whirl, see if I'm up to the task. If not, my fugu uh, apparently will run away and that'll make me really sad, so I feel like my motivation is pretty high here. And if you've installed Hatch and you have your own fugu, or you think I'm just totally weird and this is a bad use of my time, please do tell me at i5 at twit.tv. Number five, finally we have a duh tip from Jay that I'm gonna try to make some sense of. He writes, oftentimes I take a photo in landscape mode that I want to crop into portrait, but I want to maintain a preset aspect ratio. Currently when you edit a photo and try to crop it using a preset aspect ratio, it remains in the same layout. You'd think there'd be an easy way to swap that, but I haven't found one on the iPhone yet. 
The current workaround is to rotate the photo 90 degrees, then crop it in the aspect ratio you'd like, then rotate it again three more times before you save it, and voila. And then he says, maybe I just have OCD or something, but I like my photos to fill the screen on my iPad when I view photos on it that are taken from my iPhone. Okay, I have to admit, I understand what Jay's doing here, but I don't really think it would apply to me. Point being, though, if you're using the built-in crop tool while editing your photos in the native photos app, you have some control over how crop works, which is, which is what Jay is describing. If you don't like your preset choices in landscape mode, you can rotate, you can crop, and then rotating back around will give you more options. It's a pretty specific duh tip, but maybe it's something you've been looking for this whole time, and if so, passing it along. Oh, one more thing before we go. Last week I talked about how Touch ID isn't working for me that well anymore, and I asked for your feedback, and boy did I get a lot of it. In fact, it is definitely the single most responded to topic ever been done on i5 before. So we've got a lot of unhappy people. That's not actually good. Short story, Touch ID is making a lot of you as crazy as it's making me. Some of you say that you have had success by rescanning in your fingerprints, but it sounds like the majority of us just have spotty Touch ID. Misery loves company and all, but I really hope that this is something that Apple addresses sooner than later. All right, ever see or hear of an app or trick here on i5? You want to go back over it or pass it along to someone you love? Of course, just hop over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live and also where you can subscribe to this fine show with the feed of your choice or add it to your favorite podcast app. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. It's Christmas season and I'm asking for your app reviews, so please don't leave me hanging. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone and I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.